Hey there, honey. Hi, hon. What are you doing? Oh, I'm gonna harvest the eggplant, the one that you want. Looks like you already got some there. Yeah, it's a lot. Nice. What are you gonna do with all those? I'm gonna barter with my coworker. Awesome. That's a nice one. So we got three different patches of eggplants like this throughout the garden. And we've been pulling harvest like this about every two to three days right now. It's July 17th. We've also been getting a steady supply of these Mongogo Du Guatemala squash, which are good prepared as a typical summer squash when they're young. As they get older, they're best prepared in pies and preserves. We've got three different zucchini plants, one here, Another one back over there. And there's one back over there as well. And they've been pushing out an abundance of food as zucchini plants do. The tomatoes started coming online about a week ago, so we've been getting a steady harvest from them. All the tomato plants growing in my garden this year are all the same varietal. It's the Black Vernissage. Shout out to Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds. I placed several different seed orders prior to the growing season, and oftentimes they'll include a free seed pack, and I ended up with a couple different packages of the Black Vernissage. And I gotta tell you, quite the beautiful tomato, very tasty. I like that they're a small to medium sized tomato. They tend to ripen up a lot quicker. They have these tiger stripe patterns on the skin. And very prolific. Each one of these plants is loading down with tomatoes. And here's another one growing up the side of the hog panel here as a trellis. And again, just loaded down with fruit. Let me slice one of these open for you guys. So one thing I found about this tomato that's really unique is that it actually tastes better when it's still just a little bit green. When it's completely ripe, it's actually a little bit mushy. Just throw a little bit of salt on there. Mm. Delicious. Another benefit to growing just one variety of tomato in your garden is that if you're interested in saving seed, you're not going to have to worry about cross-pollination. So you can easily save these seed and grow the same exact tomato the following year and for years to come. Some other things I've been harvesting from the garden that many may not be familiar with as an edible are amaranth leaves. Which are a nice tasty little green you could add to salads, soups, smoothies. And at the base of the amaranth, I've got quite a bit of purslane growing. Purslane is familiar to most people as a weed, but actually purslane is a highly nutritious vegetable, high in omega-3. And again, you can add these into salads. I like to put these in my smoothies as well. But go ahead and give it a try. A little zing to it. Scattered throughout the garden, I also got several ashitaba plants, also known as tomorrow's leaf. Because when you harvest one of the leaves and stems from the plant, within a day or so, you'll see a whole nother shoot pop up. So they grow really fast. The borage, or barrage as I like to call it, has been pushing out a steady supply of flowers and leaves, both of which are edible. So we've got several cayenne pepper plants throughout the landscape that I need to keep up with. My wife likes to use these peppers for cooking. I like to eat them out of hand, put them in soups, and I'll even throw them in a smoothie for an added kick. Here's another one growing on the edge of the hugelkultur. 
many people might not be aware, but pepper leaves are also edible. They're best prepared cooked. Out of hand, they're not very tasty. But when they're cooked in a soup or a stew, they're actually really good. Look at this gorgeous collared kale hybrid growing atop this hugel culture. These leaves are just huge. I grew this from some seed I collected from a lacinato kale plant that had obviously crossed with a tree collard in the garden. Got a few more peppers over here I need to get. Not bad for a couple minutes of harvesting. I've been going to town harvesting these ground cherries. As you can see, the plant has grown tremendously, loaded down with fruit. And as you lift up and look under the plant, you can see all that ripe fruit. See where it actually started to root right here, where one of the stems was touching the ground. And these plants honestly produce way more than I can even keep up with. But that's just fine, they double as a ground cover. And I'm looking forward to see how well they're gonna self-seed themselves and perhaps come back next year on their own. And if you never had one of these, let me just quickly share with you. They have a papery husk on them, similar to a tomatillo. And the fruits inside range from a greenish to an orangish color. Uh, the oranger, the better. They taste sweeter, but they're all good. Mm. From what I understand, these make a great chutney, and I can see why just from the taste. And if you've been following along on the channel, then you know I love harvesting from my longevity spinach plants. This is a perennial here in zone 9B, and you can eat these raw, saute them up, add them to smoothies. It's a mild green and very healthy for you. Grapes are getting close. Actually got a couple ripe bunches already. See back there we've got a ripe bunch. They may not look commercially grown, but they're homegrown and they taste great. This will make a great snack for this evening. Now a lot of you have eaten sweet potatoes before, but perhaps you haven't tried the sweet potato greens. And we grow these primarily for the greens. They don't taste that great out of hand, but they're excellent sautéed up, put into a super stew. So give sweet potato greens a try. Now, though the chayote squash here isn't yet putting off squash, you could actually pinch off the tips of this plant. And these are really tasty. They taste somewhat like a green bean. You can eat them raw or put them in a stir fry. And I've spoken on this in the past, these comfrey plants, which are primarily out here as chop and drop for my fruit trees, I also do eat these leaves. Now, before you go ahead and do that, I encourage you to do research as uh, these plants contain pyrolyzidine alkaloids, which have been said to cause certain issues. So just look into it and come up with your own decision on that. And that sound in the background means an egg was just laid. So yes, we've been getting eggs. And these are my bowling alley locker nesting boxes, and this is my new system for easy cleaning. I put a five gallon bucket in here, a little straw, the chickens like to go in there. There's some beautiful eggs right there. The bell peppers are getting close. Just another pepper plant I have scattered throughout the garden. Here's a couple more on the edge of the hugel culture mound. And yeah, you can harvest these green, but they're not truly ripe until they're red. So I've got three of these lemongrass plants now growing out in the garden. They were all grown from stalks I picked up over at the Asian market in the produce section. And as you can see, they've grown up quite a bit in the last couple of weeks with all this heat. I've yet to actually pull a harvest and utilize this plant, but it's most commonly used in soups and teas and such. So I look forward to giving that a try. Now, besides what I've shared with you today, there's already been so many other things that we've harvested this growing season. Everything from fava beans to mushrooms, cardoon, stinging nettle, nasturtiums. We got some apricots, some apriums, 
some plums and plum cots, figs, goji berries, aronia berries, white mulberries, kale, collards, and a few things here and there like basil, oregano, onions, garlic, all of which I've been documenting and are available for viewing if you just look into my video catalog. So if you're new to the channel, I'd encourage you to go ahead and flip on back through some of those older videos and get caught up to the current day. And just look and see what's actually possible if you were to start your own garden or expand the current garden that you have now. I just want to thank everybody for tuning in today. And a quick reminder, you can hit that notification bell below this video. That'll just ensure that you don't miss any future episodes. If you haven't already, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to the channel. It's just a great way to stay in touch. And that way you can continue to follow along as things progress back here in my Northern California backyard food forest. Until next time, this is Dan from PlantAbundance.com reminding y'all to connect with nature and create a balanced ecosystem in your garden. You'll be happy you did. Take care everybody, I'll be talking to you again soon.